From Nashville's WSM Radio, the original home of the Grand Ole Opry, this is a Coffee, Country, and Cody podcast. So, Charlie Mattis, you put together these podcasts mm-hmm. each week, and we're going to feature T. Graham Brown, Giada Valenti, and... Um, Allie Colleen on this week's show. Yeah, we're in our 17th year of Coffee Country and Cody podcast, well over 1,000. Mm. Uh, so you just missed the first 13? Exactly. So, okay, yeah, you. But they're all available. Uh, you, can, you can go back. <laughs> I, was, I was so much younger when we started all of this. Podcast, I lived the magic. <laughs> they existed seven, 13 years oh, ago? 17? How many years 2007 ago? was our very first podcast. Podcasts were Steve around? Steve Azar, the pride of Indianola, <gasps> Mississippi. Yeah. With uh, okay. I Don't Have to Be Me Till Monday was our very first podcast. All right, Aaron, go ahead. Uh, that was 2007. What I was year? 10. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Ouch. when podcasts became a th- that's yeah. crazy. Yeah, that hurt. There you go. That's right. <laughs> Yikes! Two thousand seven. <laughs> Yikes! That's what she said. I was ten. She said that out loud in a room full of people who are all safely over forty. That. If this was a drinking game, we'd all be drunk. <laughs> <laughs> T. Graham Brown is the newest member of the Grand Ole Opry family. Mm. And what is so beautiful is it's a love story, Mm. really. His induction, Mm -hmm. uh, his wife, Sheila, truly going in right alongside him, as you will hear in this this podcast interview. The minute that I saw that that had happened, uh, it was a fake interview, and you'll get all the details coming up from him, but he was with Vince Gill, and I saw it immediately. I screenshot what was going on and sent it to all of us, just saying, Guys, T just got invited. Because we don't know either. We never know when that stuff's going to happen. <laughs> but that was the best piece of news that entire day, and I those, think, for all of us. Those two sweethearts have been married 46 years. Wow. And she has seen him, and he talks about it, mm-hmm. through the toughest of times. Right. Drug and alcohol abuse and just being in the music business on a good yeah. day yeah. <laughs> can cool. be hard on a relationship. And a fun visit with Allie Colleen. That's Garth and Sandy's daughter, by the way. Got a new it, tattoo. It, it, new tattoo. Well, that Spider web. doesn't narrow it down. Mm-hmm. But yes, uh, strategically they're, placed. There are a bunch, mm-hmm. but we've been along for that whole ride with her, yep. and it's just been so much fun watching her it, it just evolve as a songwriter, yeah. as a as a confident entertaining interview she's just delightful she really is yeah. and i follow her on social media because let me tell you something that girl goes in the gym and lifts heavy she inspired me to lift heavy this week so mm. i've been lifting weights because of ali colleen and her Planet daddy Fitness garth early. brooks inspired her that's right right and uh, we actually go back to those early days when she first started doing writer's nights at the scoreboard yep. which mm-hmm. is right across the street from our studio mm-hmm. she just goes there to drink now she <laughs> says that's, that's right <laughs> And the Garth Brooks watching her play soccer story is worth the price of admission. Oh, so yes. Make sure you find that. What was his so. nickname? Green, uh, the Green, green Melt. Melt. The Green, green Melt. Melt. The Green <laughs> Melt. New from Marvel. And she the said, I'm sorry, you know about that. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that on a Garth channel uh, on Sirius XM back when we had the Garth channel on Father's Day. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's and funny. all the girls, the three girls and Trisha, they were all telling stories uh, about Garth. And that came out. But Cute. <laughs> and Giada Valenti. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. 7,854 kilometers, 4,880 miles from Venice, Italy, to the Grand Ole Opry in Nashville, oh Tennessee. Goodness. But mm-hmm. doggone it, she's done it. From Andrea Bocelli to Trace Atkins. You will meet Giada Valenti. <laughs> One of these things is not like the other. <laughs> <laughs> but it all started at Christmas with Vince a few years ago. Yeah, he said. Yeah, yeah. So uh, you'll meet her international star and truly uh, five languages. Five. Yeah. French, Dutch, English, uh, Italian, yeah, obviously, and Spanish. And Spanish. Yeah. yeah. That is culture and agriculture. Is it not <laughs> Somewhere right? between. Yes. Yeah, so, oh, man. On Coffee, Country, and Cody. So if I ask you, as you listen and watch this morning, what's the best thing that ever happened to you in your life? Take just a second to think about how you would answer that. Because mm. I, I just heard this man answer that when he asked himself that question. <laughs> <laughs> T. Graham Brown is the newest member of the Grand Ole Opry family. Good Lord Almighty, man. I'm so happy for Sheila. <laughs> you said this is the, and you said it, it, you included her when you said it off the air, whether you realize it or not. You said, this is the greatest thing that has ever happened to me and Sheila. Uh, yeah. It is. Man, this is the biggest thing that's ever happened to us. You know, man, it's uh, been a long up and down 
ride and i'm just so thankful sheila's hung in there with me man we've been together 46 years and she's loved me and prayed me through some tough times and it's just wonderful it's wonderful to see her face when when all this happened it was it was a crazy deal man you know i can't believe that everybody went to so much trouble to surprise me like that <laughs> i mean i know that people you know they'll walk out on the stage of the grand Ole opry and invite somebody but man you know i have this show on sirius xm and opry dan and vince and and his publicist and all his people and and his manager was there they put all this together the people in new york at sirius xm and nashville at sirius xm and and dan and gina and it was this big 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 um, fake deal. <laughs> I, the whole, the whole thing. The, the the guy in New York called me up and said, "How would you like to interview Vince for thirty minutes for your show?" And I said, "Man, it'd be great." And he said, "Well, look, we'll do it at the new studios at the Batman Building and all." And, and I thought it was just an interview. And we've been sitting there talking, you know. They told me Vince had 30 minutes. and So tell the green room story. Kelly yeah, and I, I don't think Charlie crazy. got to hear well, this a minute ago. It, it, well, <laughs> it, the, the way it, the, on the interview thing, uh, I was going to tell you is that I was watching this clock on the wall, and and I was over over the 30 minute allotted time that they told me I had to talk to Vince. Vince, they told me Vince had to be somewhere else. Yeah. <laughs> so it was three minutes past 30 minutes, you know, and I said, well, Vince, it's, you know, I see we got to go, and I appreciate you coming and all that and and Vince went oh by the way man uh, uh, you do the Grand Ole how many times have you done the Grand Ole Opry and, and I told him he said well this whole thing has been a setup. <laughs> they sent me over here to ask you if you want to be the if you'd be the newest member of the Grand Ole Opry and I started crying man it was just like such a weight off my shoulders I've been wanting so wanting it for so long and what was odd is, you know, Vince and I have been friends since probably 84, something like that. And we were sitting in the green room before this before this interview I was going to do with Vince. And, and I just looked at him and I said, man, if they ever asked me to be a member of the Grand Ole Opry, would you be the one to induct me? <laughs> and he kind of looked at me funny, you know. And he said, sure. Yeah, I'd do that. And, and I, I, So looking back, looking you, back, you think he thought, oh, wait a minute. Somebody's told him. Somebody's dropped no, a hint. He's picked up on it. You know, I'm sure it crossed his mind. Yeah, you know, like well, I wonder, but no, I had no idea. No, I, I, but it was just odd that I asked him that like thirty minutes before he asked me. It, but <laughs> man, he fooled me. They all fooled me. It was great. It, it was great. No, yeah. he they, talked for thirty minutes me. for nothing. Well, I would love to hear the whole interview because yeah. Vince actually said he goes, "Yeah, man, I just been making stuff up. I hadn't told the truth yeah. one time in right. thirty minutes. I want to hear what these <laughs> answers are." Well. <laughs> It was just a mind blowing thing, man. And then Opry Dan and Sheila, and it, once they, once Opry Dan, they'd been hiding out. See, they didn't. We didn't know they were there. How either. long had you known Sheila, or did you? I didn't know. You didn't know either. Okay. No, right. we had. We didn't have a clue. It was amazing, Bill. I love the Opry so much, and I. You just don't know how long I've been dreaming for. Oh, to, yes, to I, us, do. It just yes feel, I do. Yes, I do. You know, it feel, it, it, we feel like we finally made it. Yeah. You know, we feel like we finally, finally made it. Before we get to the break, how many times have you played it? And take us back to the very first time you played it. Well, we're going on 400 times now. Okay. And um, the first time I ever did it was in 86. I think I tell it like it used to be was probably going up the charts, and I can't remember who who introduced me that night. I just remember it was a thrill. But golly, bum, that's that's been for almost forty years ago. Wow. But 
And it was so odd that I was already booked to be there. This all happened on Tuesday mm -hmm. afternoon. And uh, it was odd that I'd already been booked to be there Tuesday night. And so we're the opening act so on Tuesday it was, night. A, it was just a perfect day. <laughs> I don't think it was odd. They probably planned it. Did, well, they might have. <laughs> it, 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 was a, it was just a, a beautiful thing. And I want to say, and maybe you'll remember the year you were on this tour, the first time I saw you, Lakeland Civic Center, Lakeland, Florida. I was doing mornings in Orlando at WHOO. And you were opening for Ricky Skaggs in Sk Kentucky. Th yeah. So what year was that? 84? 5? Maybe 85. Okay. Yeah, because I, I... Maybe would. 85. Um, man, I am so happy. <laughs> <laughs> it really it really is a validation, man. We've been wanting this. I'm telling you, thanks to y'all goodness, man. Charlie, Kelly, of course, Bill. Y'all have been... To start with, y'all are our friends first, and y'all have just been pulling for us for so long. I've gotten so, you know what's been so cool is I've gotten messages from everybody. Mark Mark Wills was the very first message I got. But I've heard from, I mean, Clint Black was right on right on it immediately. And Gene Watson and uh, Jeannie Seeley and uh, just Opry members after Opry members have called me and Gatlin just heard from him. And, uh, I was on uh, uh, Daily and Vince's television show yesterday, and they had us flowers and all. It's just been everybody's been Mandy Barnett on and on. I can't. I'm, I know I'm leaving people out. But. Well, you know, Mandy certainly knows how you feel because she played it about 500 times. Yeah, and, I, yeah and, you know. So I, I know that. Yeah. And, and any anyway, it's just well, Kelly Sutton let us know. That's the first I heard of it was she sent us a screenshot I mean, and then it, it was like I think I responded this is the best thing ever. I <laughs> squealed. I was walking through the house and it popped up and I'm like what's what's going on? It was before the press release or anything and I, I squealed and I took a screenshot and immediately texted everybody. I was like they just has tea to be a member of the Grand Ole Opry. I was so happy for you. We all are. We're Thank so you thrilled. honey. We love Nashville. We've been in Nashville since 1982, and it's so cool that all our Nashville for we just feel like such a part of this town mm -hmm. yeah. and the music business. And we're so I can't say it enough. We're so thrilled and thankful. Well, you will be forever. Ain't and that something? And I'm telling you, man, that's what Sheila said. Always and forever, you'll be a member of the Grand Ole Opry. <laughs> and you know what's really cool is they're coming out with a hundred anniversary mm -hmm. book You'll be and, in it. and the people that were there the other night you know they filmed me doing a bunch of stuff the other night and they interviewed me for the book so i'm gonna <laughs> I, I just came under the deadline they told me they told me they were turning it in next month he said man you made the cut <laughs> t graham brown is in the house on coffee country and cody wsm radio circle tv and the grand old opry's newest member Bill Cody. Totally rocks your world, but not in the good way. WSM. So when you see Ali Colleen from one time to the next, uh, first question is uh, new tattoo? Oh, like so many of them. <laughs> I have so many of them. We can talk about as many or as few as you want. Um, but it is almost, the, it has been a while though. It's been almost a year since I got one, but I got my little spider web on my face. You it's like about it? your ear. Oh, I can okay. I can see it because your hair was blocking yeah. it there for a second. Oh, I, I was supposed it. to shave it yesterday. Uh. Sorry, I didn't. But no, I don't <laughs> have on my face. I thought you were going to say new guitar because that's the other new thing. No, that's almost never new. The guitar is almost always the same. That's okay. a big new one. Okay. But, but you had the same guitar. You were telling an off-air story. Mm -hmm. You had a guitar for seven, eight years. I still have Betsy. You, you she's were, my girl. And you were getting splinters um, from her. I do. She's got. She. She's one of those Takaminis that doesn't have a pit guard, and so I wore through her a long, long time ago. Kind of like Willie Nelson's trick. Got yeah. hole she's, got there like, with a... she's got two or three yeah. little holes in there, okay. so she you'll get splinters from her. And all that to say, we we just played a show in Illinois, and I really only have one job, and I didn't do it, and that was bring my guitar. That's it. That's all I. I mean, I have to sing a show at some point in time, but that's pretty. I got that down at this point. Not the guitar thing. So you know, you just took an Uber to Guitar Center, and now we have Illinois with us today. Yes. Mm. Well, I think maybe it's a subliminal thing because you knew if you didn't have a guitar. 
there's some place down the street that will sell one to you. My guitar player was like, you can use mine. And I was like, that's an electric, and I'm not old enough to play that. (laughs) (laughs) I don't have the life experience or credentials to touch an electric guitar. Like, I'm not there yet. That's insane. (laughs) That would be wild. How were you when you started playing? I was 14. Did you take lessons? Or? Um, I did. We had a little music shop in town um, that I went to for about two or three months and just kind of learned as much as I could. And then soccer season kicked in and it just wasn't feasible time wise. So I kind of taught myself from there with YouTube and everything. What position do you play in soccer? I was a left striker. So I was a left forward. Oh. I'm not fast. Do not ask me that question. She gets to shoot the ball. <laughs> yeah. She's shooting the ball. Kelly. All that's fair, the, the well, basketball I, equivalent. That's a kind way to put it. Really, there was there was 10 more people to get the ball back <laughs> after me. You know what I mean? So it really was the safest place for her to be on the team <laughs> and on the field. But I worked so hard. I was yes. never good, but I worked so hard at soccer. And what did your sisters do? What, oh, what they positions were, they did were, they play? They were perfect. They were awesome. They had like all the Letterman jacket patches and everything but my oldest sister um was a goalie and like that's taylor the greatest one yeah and like the one of the, the greatest goalies on the planet and then august um did track and field she was a pole vaulter oh wow Is yeah. it oh true? wow yeah so they pole vaulted and they were amazing at it also and i just tried really hard it, <laughs> that it, seems terrifying <laughs> to me oh, it, and to see it in person like it, i it's, ran at the pit like twice i yeah. never popped up once that's what i was gonna say out. like how do I you couldn't. like it, when you do it, it's great, but the failed attempts it before was, you do it, it I mean, so like, scary. No, yeah. I mean they really just ran with wow. it. Like, yeah, no, they were they were great at it. Yeah. Is it mm-hmm. not true that your father had this green hoodie or some sort of puffy jacket, <sighs> and he would go stand behind the goal? They called him the Green Melt. It was awful. <laughs> it was like I hate that you even know about it. It was like this huge puffy green like. Down, Marvel. Like sun and ski, like sun jacket. And it was puffy, and we all own one just like it, but no one's ever owned one like it in this color green. Oh. And I don't know what it was, but that's always where you knew where he was. But he would stand behind the goal and he would talk to her and, and he would he would kinda walk her through it. Um, my games he just kinda he actually did party with the parents for my games. <laughs> <laughs> but he never missed them. You know, he was always there. But he did he was he was just this green thing on the end of the thing, and then every now and then it'd be like, You would not actually believe who that is, but that's he's down there. <laughs> Well, I hate that you know about that. <laughs> That's amazing, though. That's I mean, being that mindset, I know I've been following you, and I've been so inspired by your workout regimen. <laughs> That's so kind. You have really been hitting the gym, and I, I can now see, okay, well, you were an athlete, and so you have that mindset. Yeah. Has that always been there, or is that, do you think that that's something that's passed down? Is that just how you're, you know, made up, or my, did you learn that? My dad is actually the athlete yeah. of all athletes. Okay. I mean, my dad went to college on a track and field scholarship and, and played football through He whatever, was a pole so. vaulter, wasn't he? He was a, he was a javelin Javelin thrower. thrower, that's right. I don't know what he was training for. For, but he was a javelin thrower. <laughs> there was ever a war yeah, where there was in combat. I just you know they may do Braveheart too. They might. That's just the one sport that doesn't roll over into anything. Right. You know what I mean? Like other than warfare, like you said, and like old warfare. Yeah. Like, we're not even using them anymore. No, no. Right. He'd, he'd be good at the Renaissance Festival. He would not people on horses. <laughs> you know, in the green melt, yeah. that would be his name too. Yeah. But all that to say, you know, people always ask, you know, you know, what my dad and I have done my whole life, and if we did music, we never did. We've we've worked out our whole life okay. so my dad started me weightlifting when I was a kid and um, always did sports we always played basketball and uh, just everything so that's what we did was we, we worked on things we built things and we and we worked out didn't you marry a PE teacher I did I did I, I don't think I he's that. a I honestly don't know what he does anymore to be honest because I'm not married to him anymore but he was a PE teacher I actually think he's like a firefighter now or something rad but oh. he's an athlete yeah oh. mm-hmm. yeah the workout, though, when I'm watching you, I'm like, I need to lift heavier. I'm not lifting heavy enough. How it's do just you so st- fun. How do you start down that path? I know it sounds so stupid, but you just see how heavy things are that you can pick up. I'm going to be honest. I'm inspired. I'm honest. Like, I'm I watching mean, you going, I'm literally not lifting heavy like, enough you know, you stuff. Just, you just show up to this weird place, you know, once, once a day, three times a week, whatever you can do. And you just see what you can pick up. <laughs> and it's so, insane. I, so for Ali Colleen, how many times a week? And how long are you in there? It depends on our road schedule a lot. Okay. Um, you can ask the guys. I, if I'm on the road, I work out with my VR. So you'll just like see me somewhere in a room, like on my VR working out, which is so stupid, but it's so fun. But if I'm at home, um, I'm in the gym usually five days a week. 
Oh, wow. So how do you, what, what's your break day? What, what do you ask? Um, I never go in on Sunday. I usually, I try and go every day of the week and take the weekends off. Oh, okay. Or I'll try and go like every other day and, you know, kind of make it work that way. Um, but my little brother works out with me all the time. And so he's a big help for me. And so we go and we work out and um, we're Planet Fitness kids. Nothing crazy. I love it. Uh huh. Yes. It's the actually judgment zone opposed to judgment free zone. But I love that. <laughs> oh, I love that. That's funny. I love that. The place. judgment zone. It is. Welcome it is. to the judgment yeah. zone. No, they do. They pride themselves on being a judgment free zone, but they have a lunk alarm. Uh huh. So if you're like too athletic, or if you wear like a cutoff, or if you have like a bottle of water jug with you around, they can ring this this buzzer that sounds throughout the entire gym yeah. that shows there is a lunk there. So it's the most judgmental judgment free zone there's ever been. <laughs> but I love it there. <laughs> I love it. Well, you're talking about the road. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see. On the uh, 22nd, a couple of days away, you're going to be in New Jersey at the State Theater in New Jersey, at, in New Brunswick, and then Penn's Peak in Jim Thorpe, Pennsylvania. And then uh, another Pennsylvania date followed by Whiskey Jam in Nashville. Yes, we are very lucky. This is our first. This is the kickoff week to, uh, well, my part of the Lee Bryce Acoustic Tour. Yeah. So um, all the three shows this weekend are with Lee and the next weekend as well are with Lee. So I got six of I think is like 15 or 16 dates, um, which I'm very grateful for. Um, and I haven't got to play Whiskey Jam yet at the new location at Whiskey mm -hmm. Row. So I'm excited about that. And the Smoke Show Tour, that's what your tour is called? Well, yeah, we, yeah, that's our opening song. That we're, we haven't put it out yet, but our opening song that we, we start off with is called Smoke Show. And it's just very cool. Tell me about co-writing with Lee. Lee and Sarah. Oh, it was so rad. It was great. Um, I've known Sarah forever. Sarah wrote a lot of the songs on our first album that we put out um, with me. And we've always been very close. And so when we brought in Lee one day to write with us, and um, it's wild. It was actually, I, is today the 20th or the 21st? Today is the 20th. Today is the 20th. Today's the 20th. Okay, so tomorrow yeah. is the anniversary of when we wrote Friends, uh, while well, we're still friends, the song that we just wrote. Oh, no out. kidding. Yeah. So February 21st, we all got together um, of 2021, and we wrote While We're Still Friends. And um, it was so cool. I, I mean, read a quote, not to interrupt you, but you said it was a gut punch? It was. And, and how so? It was. I think there's this, there's this really interesting... Uh, place in songwriting that I had to start navigating in the last couple of years that I'd never really been at before where you have this incredibly kind you know partner that you live with at home and you're bringing home all these songs and they're usually not happy songs and you're having to pass off oh that was a co-writer's idea man this is a co-writer's <laughs> idea we're good we're fine and I think for a really long time I wrote about a place that I didn't really know that I was in you know what I mean so while we're still friends was the gut punch for that on me that was like oh crap we're writing about Allie that sucks I didn't know to be honest <laughs> I just thought I was inspired <laughs> but we're, we're, uh, we're writing about me um, but it was awesome and it was so cool and it was funny because Lee threw out the idea while we're still friends and I said oh you don't I I'm a songwriter dog you don't have to explain this to me I get it like while like while we're friends, let's try and be like more than friends, right? And he goes, No, that's not that's not it at all. He goes he's like, It's while we're still friends. Like while we still love each other, like let's not love each other anymore. Like while we can do this in a kind way, let's do this. And I was like, Oh, that sucks. I would love to write that. <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's do that. And so him and Sarah and I just sat outside and it was one of the few days in February of that year that was so nice. I remember we all got sunburnt. I still have our picture of the day, right? And we're all so red. <laughs> and we all got so sunburnt and it was it was a great day. So did it take that time to be ready to sing it and release it because it's, it's about three years right it, yeah yeah, yeah. So yeah. this is coming so it was in 21 so we we wrote the song in february of 21 um my wonderful uh, ex-partner and i filed the month after we came home and started this conversation mm -hmm. instantly because i was like one i have a song to play for you yeah. but before we do that yeah. We need to talk about some stuff. And, you know, we, we was so kind and it was so whatever. And so it took us the year to kind of figure it out and do everything. Um, and then I always hear this thing about women. It's it's when, when we leave, we left a long time ago. You know what I mean? And when men leave, they're just now like, I don't think I like it here. I want to go. And we like we've been gone for a long time. Yeah. So That's all that so to fun. say, it was it's more just respect and mm -hmm. like kindness and just wanting to give that all the space that I could before I came at it with any kind of potential commercial gain for a song. You know what I mean? Because yeah. it was definitely the first time in my career of putting out a song that really showed one side of a story that really meant something to me. Um, and also that I was insecure about the other side of the story. You know, I don't know if, if he got to write a song about me. I don't know what he would write, to be honest. I hope it would be kind. But um, so that was a, a gut punch, to say the least, to navigate and to figure out. But now we've given it all this time. And um, 
grateful that I did too because I've got a lot of unsolicited marriage advice in my DMs right now and I'm like it's it's done dog. we're good yeah. <laughs> it's okay that would be yeah, really rough fine. if you were yeah. raw mm-hmm. and you were getting that you're like yeah. I don't exactly open my DMs. exactly so no yeah. we, we took our time with it and then very grateful that we did and then also to get to roll out the song at a time now where I'm getting to perform with Lee like we get to play the song all weekend together which I'm very excited about and you do you still play the scoreboard because that's kind of where it started for you for it uh, is writers uh, nice you ever I go back I love scoreboard I am a bar fly at scoreboard all the time I well, can tell you that people, right now people who don't know as they watch and listen it's right across from our studio at Gaylord yeah. Opryland now if you run into me there now I probably couldn't sing very well but I love that place <laughs> <laughs> I love scoreboard oh well thanks for coming to see us this thank morning thank you guys so much and sharing the new music and here's to a hundred thousand streams yeah, by the end of the day today why don't we there. let's so shoot for that with uh, while we're still friends with Allie Colleen and um, Whiskey Jam at Dirk's Bentley's place of Whiskey Road that is coming up on Monday night. This is Coffee Country and Cody. I told you he sang in Italian. I told you he I didn't did. believe it. I Trace really Adkins <laughs> with our special guest, Giada Valenti. Welcome. Good morning. You say my name so nice. Thank you very So much. please share the story of how you got Trace, because it didn't work at first, you said, having him sing in Italian. Actually, first, I, I, was, I was very afraid to ask him to do it, so I mean... Trace is huger than live, right? So, but it was a live streaming conversation. So I dared. I said, uh, and I asked him. I said, we did this duet in English, and then I said, Trace it would be fantastic if you can sing a few lines in Italian. And Trace, of course, said, I, I don't speak it. I don't speak Italian. And I said, <laughs> And with his low voice, and That's I, right. I couldn't see. Bear in mind, I could only hear his voice. I said, "Trace, but it would be fantastic. I can teach you." I said, "Okay." It's he's very polite. I mean, he must. It's as big as it is, and scary that he can look like he's the sweetest on earth. And so <laughs> I made him sing this night, "Pace in fondin," and. At the beginning, as I said at the Opry, I dare to say that he really wasn't good at all. But then suddenly. It was perfect, really, like we just heard. And I said, Trace, whatever you did, I mean, this is fantastic. What did you do? And he said, I moved my hands. <laughs> and, and then he told me the story that actually he was once in Italy and he was ordering pasta and he wanted to have extra formaggio, extra cheese. So he turned to the waiters and he said, uh, can I have some extra cheese? And the waiter turned around and he said, formaggio. So <laughs> and the night at the Opry Bill, you were there and he said, pace. And everybody was laughing. I mean, he made all Italy so proud. I mean, come on. <laughs> That's awesome. More cowboy than Trace Atkins. Who can you have more country than Trace, right? Well, you're in Nashville. You make your home in Las Vegas. You lived in New York for a time. Yes, 11 years. Yeah. And, uh, but London, Amsterdam. You, but I'm from Venice. That's Venice. But that's where I wanted to pick up the story is mm-hmm. take us back to your childhood in Venice. Venice. Yeah, many people say, how can you leave Venice? I mean, I think you never leave Venice because, I mean, Venice is in my heart. Venice is in everything I do. Venice is the... Have you ever been, guys, there in Venice? It's, no. It's the only city in the world with the streets made of water so we walk or we take boats to move around the police is on boat the firefighters are on boats everything is on boats only tourists are walking on the on are around the city and Venice is romantic I mean my whole life I'm always say I'm the result of everything I've seen or we all are in my whole life I've seen people coming to Venice to celebrate wedding anniversary so they come there happy they come they're always hugging and kissing so for me love is just like my mother would say where are you coming from I said from Venice ma so because I'm a big <laughs> true believer in romance, in love, in kindness. And I think that's being Venice. That's what, what Venice is, is for me. And what did your folks do? Your parents? My, my father is a, is a retired knight, but was a police officer, and my mother was a secretary in a big uh, uh, company that makes wine, a winery. So I... I grew up with my grandfather, my grandmother. We were just laughing before. And they were very wise. I find that uh, uh, older people from the past, they were much more... Uh, how do you say wiser than we have are? wisdom? Wisdom. Yes, they had yeah. wisdom oh. in, in their simplicity because my grandfather was was a bread maker. He was very famous in town for making the best bread in, ta- bread in town. But he was very simple. So, and I grew up. Uh, I mean, I'm always say I'm from a different country, but my relation to the country music and the country world mm-hmm. is that. Mm-hmm. I love that we are first human being. And that we just saw Kelsey Ballerini, I met Trace Atkins, Vince Gill, all these superstars, but they are not superstars. They're just normal people first, and then they have this amazing talent that they 
that they share with the world. And so I, I always find of all the American music, because I've been, a uni- I've been in the United States since 2006, mm-hmm. of all the music that you guys have in this country, it, country music has always been my first connection to. First of all, because country lyrics are very easy to understand, even mm-hmm. from somebody like me, that English is my third language in the row of the five I speak. So, What do you speak? Be- I speak Italian, I speak French, I speak Dutch because my husband is Dutch from the Netherlands. Mm-hmm. I speak uh, Spanish and English. Wow. Hmm. So so I've never been to Venice, but I have heard that of all the U.S. cities, New Orleans is maybe the closest in feel to Venice. Have, uh, have you been to New enough, Orleans? Funny enough, I've never been no? to New Orleans. Oh, I have, wow. I have yeah. dear friends over there, yeah. yeah. I, I don't know. I, I, I have to go to New Orleans. Yeah. I've heard of that. They also, they told me that San Francisco was is the most European city. I've been to San Francisco, mm-hmm. which I do love San Francisco. But, mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know. Venice, you it's guys just, have to, yeah. yeah, you just yeah. have to come there. Mm-hmm. We all we all have yeah. to bring everybody. You, you have to come to Venice. Road trip. Road trip. Well, yeah, you know, with the time to, change, our morning show will be lunchtime. So it's exactly. perfect. <laughs> it's, it, hey, yeah. And I can make pasta out here. <laughs> <laughs> and we, can, we can make a completely different show. So, so when did music <laughs> come into your life? Was that something just from childhood? When did you childhood. discover like, that this was a gift? It was just my grandmother. She was a great singer, even though she had seven kids and she could never make a career out of it. She was the one that, it's the normal story. She took me to church on Sunday and there I was sitting on the lap of my grandmother and she was singing this beautiful Ave Marie. And I was singing along and somebody said, hey, that kid has taken all the tune, like they say. So was she that told my parents, let's enroll Jada to a music school. So I learned to play the piano before I could even write uh, words. I could write music notes. And then I I start singing. Of course, the first path and connection to music for me was classical music Mm -hmm. because my grandmother was a huge fan of Maria Callas and the classical music. So, And I did so, which was, was a blessing in a way that I've learned the technical singing but then it was very clear to me because I think I was like 14 or something the classical music wasn't for me because mm-hmm. I'm a mezzo soprano so I don't have really the high right. belting voice so I had to learn something for the famous aria the Carmen and I remember the teacher saying to me and yeah you have to stop and breathe and I said I don't want to b- take a breath I, I can hold the notes longer and she said no it's even written on the music chart I'm like, okay. So for me, music is freedom Mm -hmm. of expression. Classical music, it's really... So I went home and said, Grandma... I'm sorry, but I'm changing my path. And I went into jazz music. There was all... Oh, <laughs> talking about throwing the rule book out the window. <laughs> so where do you meet Vince Gill the first time and he invites you to the Opry? What's that story? So uh, during COVID, the, when the, the world was closed, there was nothing to do. I st- the brain of everybody, I think, started to go in all kinds of directions. And I said to my husband, I love Christmas time. I said, let's start to work now about a Christmas album. So when the the world will open again we're going to have some christmas to celebrate together so we started to work on this christmas album and then suddenly i heard the version of vince gale of blue christmas and of course i've been a huge fan who who is not a fan of vince gale and i said to my husband i really love his version let's do this version so i called the producer in los angeles and we did blue christmas we took a gamble to do it in vince gale tonality which was very low for a female woman and i recorded in that key i sent it to his team and I said how lovely would it be to for, for Vince to sing I mean I thought it was like an impossible dream right <laughs> Vince Gill Jada Valenti hello a couple of uh, a month later I received the most incredible email with an attachment and was Vince Gill's voice on Blue Christmas oh and so I connected to him and actually he was also saying if you want me to change anything please do and I was like it's like to ask God, can you change your, your colors? And I'm like, that, that's, so I and, and then of course a couple of months later, for first four words, I'm in Nashville and, and Vince said you wanna come to the Opry and it was an insane moment because I'm there at the backstage at the Opry, right, waiting for Vince Gill. You were there the other night. <laughs> you were presenting and oh no, somebody was there. I don't remember who I was think there, it was Mike. It Mike was Terry, Mike. So, anyway, I didn't pay Vince. attention to anybody. Yeah. I only saw Vince Gill and everybody was gravitating around Vince Gill and suddenly this huge man 
that is Vince Gill, right? He looked at me and he said, I know you. So I thought it was somebody, it must have been something, somebody behind me. Because, I mean, can, cannot be me. You know, I'm in line to wait the, to meet the king. You're talking to me? You, and, 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 and he comes to me and the only thing I was able to do, I just hug him. Oh, I love him. And what a great heart, what a great artist. I mean, I love everything. Thanks for listening to the Coffee, Country, and Cody podcast. Make sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode. And please leave us a five-star review. This podcast was produced through the facilities of WSM Radio in Nashville, Tennessee. The hosts of Coffee, Country, and Cody are Bill Cody, Charlie Matos, and Kelly Sutton. Producer, Eric Markham. WSM General Manager and Director of Content and Programming, J. Patrick Tittle. Copyright 2023. Aubrey Entertainment Group Holdings, LLC.